We have all heard of the myths and the legends of our history. But is there another story? Our forefathers were Stone Age people. Of course, they adored the sky. They saw the little lights up there, but they could not understand the little lights. For them, it was a mystery. And there were different shapes of lights, and they had different colors. That's how astronomy started. Humans could not understand what was going up there. Of course, they realized that throughout the years, the situation in the sky will change. And then they realized also, after one year, it restarts again, the same continuation up there. So the oldest astronomy was miraculous. And the oldest religious probably were natural religious. They adored the moon. They could not understand the sun. They could not know what is a lightning and it turned out the thundering behind it. They could not understand how all this fits together. But then of a sudden, the heavens opened and some beings from outer space descended. And these were the first teachers. And now the teachers taught the humans about astronomy. They teach them about the connections up there. So what the oldest monument in astronomy is, nobody knows. But one of the oldest of them is definitive New Grange in Ireland. And we still don't understand how it is made and what purpose it was. But we know New Grange is a dolmen. Dolmen means it is a hill. And the, the hill was made artificially by Stone Age people. Now they must have known a lot about astronomy because they made a special hole in this dolmen, in the, in the passageway. And only on June 21st, the sun entered exactly in this opening, in this passageway, and went through the dolmen and lighted a stone which was in the back. And then the whole dolmen was brilliant on light. Light was shooting all over like laser beams. Now it was done for astronomy because it's always on the June 21st. Why? We have no answer. Who made it? We got astronomical knowledge. Why did they make what they did? There are so many questions open which nobody knows. Stonehenge is another mystery. You see, according to official uh, archaeology, Stonehenge was constructed in three different etapes. The oldest one should be about 2800 BC. And then, so 800 years later, they make the second part, and later again the third part. But in the meantime, archaeology has found out that Stonehenge is in reality much older than 2800 BC. It must go far back, we don't know how far. Now the problem is about Stonehenge, we have many, many theories, different ideas what it was. But one thing can be clearly demonstrated. You see, Stonehenge is composited of different rings of stone. Now, these rings have a certain distance between one ring and the next ring. And these distances of the rings are the same as the distances of the planets in our solar system. You see, in our solar system, in the center we have the Sun. The next planet which orbits the Sun is Mercury. Then comes Venus, then comes the Earth, then comes Mars, then at Jupiter. Between Mars and Jupiter is a big lake. The same situation happened with Stonehenge. You can demonstrate this. You see, there's one ring for Mercury, one ring for uh, Venus, one ring for the Earth, then one ring for Mars. Between Mars and Jupiter is a big lake, and far away out of the rings is the biggest stone called the Heel Stone. He stands for Jupiter, a big stone because Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system. So now, if this is not coincidence, then some teachers must have told this to our 
Stone Age people, because otherwise they could have known nothing about the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. You need a powerful telescope to realize that there is something between Mars and Jupiter. But Stonehenge, all the rings, they have the same shape as the planets in our solar system. There are many, many things outside of Europe. Some years ago, for example, I was in Colombia. In Colombia, there is in the jungle a so-called secret city. It's, their name is Buritaca. They call it Buritaca 200 because there are 200 small rivers, and 200 means 200. So Buritaca 200, they call it the last city in the jungle. And this city is composited of several terraces, like pyramids. One terrace is smaller, composited on the, on the older ones, and it comes up to different forms and shapes. And on these terraces, some building, not stone building, normal houses made out of wood and straw were constructed. But these houses were orientated again astronomically. For example, there is one house which they call the house of the man. There is another house which they call the house of the woman. Now, from the house of the man, there is a pillar going up from the ceiling. And from the house of the woman, there are two crossed pillars. Now exactly on March uh, uh, 21st, the sun rises up and makes a shadow exactly on the pillar of the man's house, which crosses the two, uh, let's say, legs of the women, which means symbolically, it's springtime, you have to put the seed into the earth. But it all works by astronomy. They were sure that the whole universe has to do with God. Of course, the, the natives there, they are called the Kogis. And the Kogis had their teacher from heaven. The teacher told them the important things about astronomy. And not only this, the teachers also told them about the coming flood. Like in the Bible, they told them you must construct a ship to be saved before the great flood. Now in all these cases, constructing a ship, be it in the Bible, Noah, be it at the Kogi up there in, in, in Colombia, which is far away from the biblical stories. So in all these cases, it was not just a miraculous God who by shake hand or making this, here is a ship. So like a miracle now, they always used technology. Constructing a ship is technology. And constructing a ship means you need some time. It's not the story of the Great Flood that simply somebody told them it is coming. They knew in advance, and at least one year in advance, if not more, that the Great Flood would come. Otherwise, you have no time to construct a ship. So who were these beings who knew in advance that the gigantic flood would arrive? Here again, we end with extraterrestrials. They had the knowledge seen from outer space. They knew what was coming. They knew, for example, that it is possible that the pole would change, the magnetic pole would change. They knew it in advance. That's why they give the, some of the human group time to construct a ship. In old Sumeria, there is a so-called King's List. The King's List is today in the British Museum in London. There you can read the oldest kings before the Great Flood, and then the flood comes, and the King's List say, and after the flood, the gods descended again from the sky to the human. The same situation we have in Colombia. These Kogi, if we seen it from a technical point of view, they would be primitive. These Kogi knew about the Great Flood. They constructed the ship. And again, in the Kogi mythology, they say, after the water disappeared, the gods descended again from the sky. The same situation like in the Sumerian legend. I have studied so many myths and legends, and practically every old culture knows about the Flood, including the Maya, for example. Or you go to Greek mythology, there we have Plato, and Plato speaks about the great flood which was coming. Now, Plato had no contact with the Maya. The Maya were living in Central America, and they all have the same stories, because it was a great flood. And all 
they have the same story say that a god was coming from the sky, was warning them, give them time to construct the ship. And after the flood, when the water disappeared, the gods descended again from the sky. Beyond the Legends.